Hey, welcome back to Abstract Algebra. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to continue our work in the new polynomial ring we're thinking about, polynomials over a field. I mentioned in the class lecture, and I'll mention it here too, that this ring, the polynomials over a field, it behaves very much like the ring of integers. <clears throat> Um, and in particular, uh, just like in the ring of integers, there's a division algorithm. So that's kind of the, the primary objective of this lecture. While well, you can see there are two of them there, I want to state and prove the division algorithm for the polynomials. And you, you already know this algorithm. You already know how to do, do polynomial long division. But we'll state and prove it. Uh, it's theorem 4.55 in Herstein's book. And then we're going to use that to prove that, uh, uh, like the integers, the polynomial ring is a principal ideal domain. We already know that the polynomial ring is an integral domain. It's a commutative ring with unity with no zero divisors. So this principal ideal domain will just need to show that every ideal in it, like the integers, is a principal ideal. All right. So uh, let's get let's get going here. Uh, you already know how to do polynomial long division. You learned the algorithm in high school. I think before I state this division algorithm, I just want to kind of do an example. So, so suppose I take a couple of polynomials. You can think of these things as polynomials over the real field or over the rational field. Everything we'll do will stay inside of that. So, so maybe I'll do that. Uh, F and G, they're polynomials uh, uh, with rational coefficients. They actually happen to be integers, but we have to say rational coefficients because we're requiring our coefficients to come from a field. The ring of integers is not a field, but the, the field of complex number, or sorry, of rational numbers is. So I've got these two polynomials. Uh, one of them is fourth degree, uh, and I wrote it uh, uh, in the kind of conventional way of highest degree terms down. You could write it highest, lowest degree terms up if you want. And I've got this other polynomial G, and the question is, what if I wanted to divide F by G? How could I do that polynomial long division? So you remember this. I have left myself some work to room, or room to work here. Uh, I wrote my polynomial F, the thing I'm going to be dividing into down there. And as usual, I put some placeholders. F doesn't have a cubic term. You don't have to write it. But for this algorithm, it's convenient to write it because we could end up getting some cubic terms. I would do the same thing over here for G, but G has all of its terms. And then how does this algorithm go? You remember it? I need to put something here that when I multiply it by x squared, I get 3x to the fourth because I'm going to subtract and I want to eliminate those leading terms. So you can already say what it is, but, but if you want to be systematic about it, what I need to do is take 3x to the fourth and, and sort of think about, well, what, what, would I what would I get if I divided it by x squared? Well, I'd get 3x squared. Uh, so 3x squared is what I have to put there. So let me do it. So, and then I distribute. I take the 3x squared and I need to multiply it by all three of these terms, writing the result down there. So 3x squared times x squared is 3x to the fourth. That's why we chose it, they match. 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. 3x squared times one is 3x squared. Yeah, and then I subtract eliminating that leading term. So uh, 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 when I subtract, well, the x to the fourth terms cancel. I would get negative 3x cubed. 7 take away 3 is 4x squared. Uh, and these guys, I'm just subtracting 0. OK? So I call that thing kind of my successive remainder. And then uh, if I can answer the question, I do it again. What could I multiply by x squared to get minus 3x cubed? Well, uh, uh, there's only one thing. It would have to be minus 3x. So you do it, minus 3x cubed. Then you uh, minus 3x times x, minus 3x times 1, and you subtract. The leading terms cancel. That's why we did it. Here I'll get 7x squared uh, uh, plus 4x uh, plus 3. Okay. And then if you can, you do it again. What could I multiply x squared to get 7x squared? Well, you can multiply it by 7. So 7x squared plus 7x plus 7. Subtract, uh, four take away three, uh, seven is negative three, three take away seven is negative four. And then when you ask the question, what can I multiply x squared by to get negative three x? Well, you can't do that with a positive or a non-negative power of x. Polynomials, no negative exponents are allowed. So uh, uh, we stop. As soon as the degree of the successive remainder, it's one, is less than the degree of what we're dividing by, that's when the algorithm puts the brakes on. We don't continue. 
So what do we have to do? Uh, what, well, what, I mean, what have we learned? We've learned that if you take your, your polynomial, sorry, 3x to the fourth uh, plus 7x squared plus x plus 3, and you divide it by x squared plus x plus 1, well, you get this quotient, 3x squared minus 3x plus 7, uh, plus this remainder, minus 3x minus 4, over what you're dividing by. So you might be used to writing it in that form. I'm going to multiply everything here by what we divided by and rewrite this like this. 3x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus x plus 3 what we were dividing into is equal to our uh, uh, quotient, or, or, or what we divided by, x squared plus x plus 1, times our quotient, 3x squared minus 3x plus 7. Uh, uh, and then, well, I would have plus minus 3x minus 4. So sorry that got kind of squeezed in here. I'm trying to keep the theorem statement down there. But if we took our, what we did, we took our original f and we wrote it as our original g times something, I'm gonna call it the quotient, plus some remainder. And notice that that remainder's degree is less than the degree of what we were dividing by. That's why we stopped. All right, so there, it's my pleasure to remind you how to do polynomial long division. And now let me state <clears throat> the division algorithm. You can pause the video there and go back if I didn't uh, give you enough time to look at all of that. So just hit the pause button anytime you want. Uh, the division algorithm, it's theorem 4.55 in our book, and I'm actually gonna make a slightly stronger statement of it. Uh, uh, the division algorithm says, if you take any two polynomials, one of them's not zero. Here's what the extra part is. There's unique polynomials Q and R that satisfy that equation. You can always write F as GQ plus R. This is very much like the integers, yeah? Quotient and remainder, but then, the, the notion of size of an integer here gets replaced with the degree. When you write f as gq plus r, either r is the zero polynomial, which has no degree at all, or its degree is less than g, the less than the degree of g, what you're dividing by. Let me emphasize that that's a g. Okay, so let me try to show you how to write this down. Uh, I mean, basically, the, the proof is by induction, because can I scroll back and look at our example? The proof is by induction because of this. When you do this first step and you eliminate those leading terms, well, then you get something whose degree is less. So by induction, the theorem works. And then you just gotta put it all together. So that's basically a short summary. If you wanna skip ahead, that's it's not a proof, but it's, it's basically the idea of it. So let's see if we can't start this out. Uh, uh, we're gonna prove the existence by the induction. And, and there's some trivialities at the beginning that we have to take care of. If, if F is the zero polynomial, so it doesn't have a degree. I can't, I mean, I'm gonna induct on the degree of F, but I can't if F is the zero polynomial. But if F is the zero polynomial, then I can just take Q to be zero and R to be F, because zero equals zero plus zero and all the conditions of the theorem hold, okay? So, so that, that's kind of a triviality. And then moreover, if F isn't zero, um, if its degree is less than the degree of G, if the degree of f is less than the degree of what we're dividing by, then once again, I'll just take q to be zero and r to be f, and the theorem is, is satisfied. You can just write f is zero plus f. Zero plus f, yeah, is equal to f. So, so uh, good. So, so uh, uh, I'm gonna then give some notation. Let's suppose that the coefficients of f are a's and the coefficients of g are b's. Uh, the, the leading terms are not zero, so the degree of f is m, the degree of g is n, and what I just said above is we might as well assume that M is at least N, because if M is less than N, then we just do this and, and we've proved it. All right, so here's how you write down that first step in the division algorithm. I, I let P be this polynomial. It looks kind of intimidating, but look at what I've done. I've just taken the leading coefficient of B, and I've got its inverse. I'm not writing dividing by it because I'm working in a field, but I take B sub N's inverse. That exists because B sub N is not zero. And I multiply it by A sub M times X to the difference. So this is exactly what I did up in our example. Sorry for the scrolling. It's this. I'm just working out what would I need to multiply the leading term of G by so that when I'm done, I get the leading term of F. Okay, sorry, more scrolling, but I have to do this. I have to take one over BN 
times uh, uh, the leading term of f times uh, uh, x to the difference power, that was our four minus two above, and then multiply that by g, all right? And when you do that, you can see it here. When you multiply all this by g, well, you're gonna take this thing and multiply it by this term, so the bn times its inverse cancels, you'll get an am, the x to the n times x to the m minus n is just x to the m, uh, 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 right? And then you'd get the rest of the terms. I don't really care about them. So you'd end up with this, this thing times the constant term B0 times X to the N minus M, but you don't care about all that stuff. What you do care about is this polynomial P has the same leading coefficient as F, right? So, so stop this video and kind of go slower and work it out. It's, it's, it's doable. I'm talking fast and I'm not really explaining it all that well, but if you take P to be that polynomial that's written down, then uh, it, gets, it has the same leading term as F. So if you subtract P from F, right, this is your first successive remainder, if you like, then you get something with smaller degree. Because if the degree, if the leading term of P and the leading term of F are the same, when you subtract them, those things cancel. So you're gonna have something of degree at most M minus one. So by induction, the polynomial H can be written as G times some quotient Q1 plus some remainder R1, where those are polynomials and the theorem's conditions are hold, okay? Cool, well now all we have to do is a little bit of algebra. We said that H is F minus P. So here I'm writing that in, there's F minus P and that's equal to this right-hand side. And then what did I do? I just added this term, this B inverse AM, blah, blah, blah. I can't say it. It's easier for me to just circle it. I just added this term to both sides. They, they have G's in them. I factored out the G. I get this kind of algebraically complicated looking thing. Stop the video and check all this algebra. I'm not going slow enough to let you do it in real time, but you can stop it. Uh, I'll just pronounce that new thing as a polynomial called G. I mean, it's a polynomial, right? G1 was a, or sorry, Q. G, Q. Q1 was a polynomial. This thing is a polynomial. The sum of two polynomials is a polynomial. So just call all of that Q. The R is gonna be the same. Uh, uh, and then I've written F as G times Q plus R. And I know that the degree of R is less than the degree of G. So existence, okay? How about the uniqueness? Uniqueness proof always goes the same way. Suppose you have some Qs and Rs that both satisfy the theorem. I'm being a little bit uh, fast and loose here, but that would mean that I've written F in both of these expressions. Well, uh, uh, if they both equal F, they equal each other, and you can algebraically re rearrange it like that, factoring out a, uh, out a G on the left-hand side, right? And now if I wanna show Q1 minus Q2 and R2 minus R1 are zero, I wanna show those Qs are the same. I wanna show that this was a unique expression. Well, if those things aren't zero, then these polynomials have degree. And we proved a theorem that says that the degree of a product is the sum of the degrees. So if you take a look at the degree of this left-hand side, it's the degree of G plus the degree of Q1 minus Q2. The right-hand side is the degree of R2 minus R1. But that right-hand side, R1 and R2 both have degree less than G, so so does their difference, yeah? This is a contradiction, because I have something whose degree is less than G, and yet it equals the degree of G plus something that's at least zero. That can't be true. You can't take a number, add something that's at least zero and end up with something that's less than it. It's not possible. So that's a contradiction. Where did the contradiction come from? It came from the supposition that Q1 minus Q2 and R2 minus R1 weren't zero. So therefore they have to be zero. And that's the proof of the division algorithm. All right. Stop the video, take a breath. I'm just gonna keep going here. I wanna prove the next theorem. The next theorem says that if you take a non-zero ideal in the ring of polynomials, it's principle that it's the ideal generated by some non-zero element, okay? So this theorem says that every ideal in f of x is a principle ideal just like with the integers. And if you go back and, and look at when we proved that every subgroup of Z is cyclic, it's gonna be the exact same proof. Okay, so good, let's walk through it. Give me a non-zero ideal. Well, there has to be a non-zero polynomial in it. 
right? So of all the non-zero polynomials in it, they all have a degree. That degree is a non-negative integer. So I must be able to choose the smallest one. So I'll pick a non-zero element of i with the smallest possible degree. So it's a non-zero element of i. Its degree is less than or equal to the degree of anything else that's in i that has a degree. All right, and then this is gonna be an exercise I'm leaving for you. Uh, maybe it'll show up on your final exam. But if G is, since I is an ideal and G is in it, then the ideal generated by G will be in it. I'm not gonna say anything else more about it. That's a good exercise for you to do. But that shows that the uh, subset inclusion parentheses G is contained in I, okay? So I have to show the other inclusion. So pick an element F. I have to somehow show that F is a multiple of G. How would I possibly do that? Well, let's use the division algorithm. The division algorithm says that F is G times Q plus R, where R is either zero or its degree is less than G. My goal is to try to show that R is zero because then F is a multiple of G and then I have shown that, that uh, anything in this ideal is in, in the principal ideal generated by G. Okay, we'll take that equation and just solve it for R. And then let's remember here that F itself is in I, we wrote it right there, G is in I, right? It was part of our hypothesis. Uh, 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 G has minimal degree. So G times Q is in I. I is sticky. You're in I, you're in I, then Q is gonna get absorbed into I. The difference of two things in is, is in, I, and in I is in I. So, so this remainder is in I, right? But the remainder, its degree is less than the degree of G, strictly less. And G had minimal degree for a non-zero polynomial. So we have a contradiction unless r is zero. If r is non-zero, then this degree inequality is a contradiction. So r must be zero. And if r is zero, then f is a multiple of g, that is, it's an element. And so, so we've shown that every element of, of i is in parentheses g, so they're equal. Okay, so stop that, take a breath. I know it's fast, but what we've just shown as a corollary, we already know f of x is a commutative ring with unity and no zero divisors, and I just showed you every ideal is principal. So this is good vocabulary check. Uh, you can stop and kind of sift through your definitions, but you put all of that together uh, and uh, uh, we've shown that this thing is a PID. The, the polynomial ring over a field is a principal ideal domain. Every ideal in it just consists of the set of multiples of a fixed polynomial. And our proof even showed us what the fixed polynomial is. It's the polynomial in there with minimal degree. There might be many such polynomials. That, like, there might be, if the minimal degree is two, can take any, any, there's lots of quadratic polynomials in there, but they all kind of differ in a, in a simple way. So we're gonna end this with a definition. Um, when people call a polynomial monic, they mean its leading coefficient is one, okay? So a monic polynomial has leading coefficient one. So its degree in here is n, and uh, the leading coefficient is a one. That makes it a monic polynomial. All right, here's another exercise for you that I'm not going to do. Maybe it'll show up on your final. If you take two polynomials, F and G, okay? Um, and, or so sorry, if, if you take a polynomial G, pardon me, and its leading term is not zero. If you divide all of the coefficients, if you multiply all the coefficients of G by the inverse of that leading coefficient, so you'd get, a one, you get BM inverse times BM minus one and so on. So, so you basically just take your polynomial, multiply all of its coefficients by the inverse of its leading term, then I claim that, that F and G have the same principal ideal. That when you multiply F, sorry, when you multiply G by the inverse of BM, you don't change the ideal generated by G, okay? So that's an exercise for you. I'm not gonna say anything else about it, but as a corollary of it, we can say that if you take a non-zero ideal in f of x, then it's generated by a unique monic polynomial of minimal degree. Because of all the polynomials of minimal degree in that, in that ring, uh, uh, if you divide them by their, their leading coefficient, then you, you get um, this monic polynomial. And then that, that's a way of sort of distinguishing the generator. All right, try to keep this short. Thanks for listening.